Now, uh, we've been talking about this earlier in the program, this report that did come out then and said that, uh, hey, the situation with men's health out in the country, we know it's bad everywhere when compared with health more generally in women's, but in the country we're talking about another kettle of fish altogether. Uh, it, it was troubling, to say the least. Yeah, well, look, I, I think uh, it'd be interesting to talk to her about uh, uh, the variables of, you know, sort of remoteness versus... Uh, smaller towns versus the bigger cities, yeah. and also uh, what impact, um, you know, the rural doctor sort of so-called crisis has had on that. Well, she's on the line now, in fact, Sally Bullock from the Australian Institute of Health and Welfare. Uh, good afternoon to you, Sally. Good afternoon. How are you going? Quite well, thanks. Well, I'm not sure if you heard Rob's question there, but maybe you can outline a little bit for us the different challenges faced by uh, people in, in rural areas compared to the cities when it comes to men's health. Look, sure. The report that was released yesterday by the Australian Institute of Health and Welfare looked at a range of health risk factors and looked in quite detail at uh, death rates for males. So we found, as you alluded to, that as you move further away from those major urban cities, death rates increase. So, for example, in inner regional areas, death rates were 8% higher than major cities and in very remote areas, this figure went up to 78%. So just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, major cities, that's fairly self-explanatory, places like Sydney, Melbourne, etc. In a regional, an example would be Bendigo in Victoria and very remote, for example, Tennant Creek. So we're seeing an increase of death rates as we move further away from major cities. We're also seeing a greater prevalence of health risk factors so such as smoking and alcohol. Okay. Just, yeah, so just to give you some, some statistics, for men in outer regional areas, they were 50% more likely to be daily smokers and men in remote and very remote areas were 70% more likely to be daily smokers than their counterparts in the cities. Wow, that's, that's interesting that that's come out of the report because I must admit, when I heard it, I thought, OK, you're talking about the difficulties faced by people in a rural setting health-wise. You've got the tyranny of distance, the access yeah. to facilities. Mm. But you're saying there's actually sort of a social problem out there too. Well, it's, it's myriad factors and we, we don't go into the details of exactly why, but we do know, obviously, the further away you move from city, there's, there's a higher proportion of Indigenous Australians and as we know, they generally have poorer health outcomes than non-Indigenous Australians. We also know, as you've alluded to, that service access can be a problem the further away from major cities you move, as well as we know that there's a greater number of areas of lower socioeconomic status. So by that I mean lower levels of education, yep. lower income, higher unemployment. So all those factors we know are associated with poorer health outcomes. And probably those people out there too aren't uh, as saturated with the anti-smoking messages and okay. whatever is, mm. uh, those inside are as well. well. Well, that's interesting that you brought that up because it's the first time that we at the Institute have actually looked at data on this concept of health literacy. Now, health wow. literacy, for those of you that aren't aware, this is the ability to take messages, for example, health messages, and actually apply them to your own behaviours, so individual management, I suppose, to be able to digest accurately information on medicines and information um, about health programs, for example. So in regards to this, for data for 2006, we found that men living in inner regional and outer regional remote areas were 22% less likely than men in the major cities to possess this adequate level of health literacy. Wow. So, yep, yeah, so you've sort of mm. pointed out maybe they don't have access, but this also gives us an idea that maybe they, they don't have um, the adequate health literacy to actually digest those messages in an in effective way. Yeah. So, Sally, one of the other issues that uh, uh, has been prevalent in regional Australia in more recent mm. times, is the, the, the so-called rural doctor crisis. Now, some towns are incredibly lucky in that they've had the same GP or GPs there 20, 30 years, and mm. they get to know their patients very, very well. Whereas mm. there's a lot of other towns out there that have had enormous trouble, uh, mm. overseas doctors and whatever, and just a huge turnover of doctors, times without doctors. Uh, mm. Is there anything to sort of say that the better the GP actually knows his, uh, his patients that... Uh, yeah, you know, obviously that would have some impact, but has that been measured at all? Look, not in this report, so I, I can't comment specifically sure. on that. The Institute does have reports on the supply of doctors, but what you're asking is, is slightly 
um, different to that and I don't have anything on hand. But we do obviously know from research out in the field that men are less likely to visit a GP um, and they're often more likely to dismiss their health symptoms. So if they're starting to feel a little bit sick, they probably just don't go and see uh, seek that help um, until it becomes more severe or life-threatening. So we, we have done a, a brief review of the literature and that is outlined in the report. Sally, will the report be making any recommendations to the government? It hasn't made any recommendations. It has been commissioned by the Department of Health and Ageing, in particular the Office of Rural Health. So it's our hope that this data are then used by that department to inform future rural health policies and programs into the future. Well, it, look, I tell you what, it's 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 scary uh, that mm. this is the case, and it almost sounds as though, Rob, that the the means by which we get the communication out there, we've been so fast to jump on technology and the internet and bits and pieces. Perhaps uh, the way in which we carry the message has outstripped the, some people's ability to actually receive it. Yeah, and uh, you know, a lot of the newer technologies, the uh, the ability of uh, uh, a lot of the people out there to use those technologies is not currently there. Mm. Sally, we appreciate your time this afternoon. No, I appreciate you having me. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Thanks for that. Sally. Sally Bullock there from the Australian Institute of Health and Welfare. She authored, in fact, the report on the state of men's health.